If you watch the Dungeons & Dingoes Twitch stream, then you will know that this is a reference to that, but wait, no, you probably don't, because I don't get many viewers. Fudge. I'm going to eventually have a better sort of art intro for this video series. Anyways, let's continue. Welcome everybody, my name is Lawrence Lelouse von Einswald, and welcome to Lawrence and the Limelight, the D&D after show for the Dungeons & Dingoes podcast. In today's episode, ladies and gentlemen, we will be doing episode zero, where I, Lawrence, explain to you the concept of what this D&D after show will be, and where we will go from here. In today's episode, I will be talking about me, Lawrence, the most important character, and how I will be putting my other fellow players in the limelight, so to speak, as we go into more depth about the previous episode that we just played, some little facts and little hints and more interesting things about our characters. Maybe we'll get into the crunchy stuff about the numbers and everything like that. But for the time being, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode zero, where I will talk a little bit about me, Lawrence. Are we, are, are we, are we seriously going to do this, my dude? Are we going to do this back and forth between me, the player, and you, Lawrence? Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, no, I, I don't, I don't believe we are. I couldn't be bothered putting my collared shirt back on, whatever. The illusion is gone. I'm sorry. Ah! Uh. And it's me. Hi there, everybody. My name is actually Silver, and welcome to this video. Lawrence is now gone. Maybe he'll return later in this episode, but whatever. Anyways, guys, as I said before, this is going to be a new thing that I would like to be doing on the channel. Uh, I take my D&D role-playing very seriously, and I have come up with a whole thing for my character, if you're wondering what that is, whatever. Uh, yes, if you're unfamiliar, ladies and gentlemen, I have been doing a podcast with some friends of mine, the Dungeons & Dingoes podcast. We have been streaming it. Uh, check out our stream Wednesdays, 7 p.m., AST time, time zones, something like that. Uh, Twitch.tv slash super69, Twitch.tv slash basementosaurus. You better watch it. So then, guys, the podcast has been a lot of fun, and I would like to do my own sort of little extra thing, and here we have this idea, Lawrence and the Limelight. So, my character, Lawrence, is this fancy man sort of thing. I've come up with a sort of British kind of fancy man, noble kind of accent for him, and whenever I speak in character, I try to do this whole thing. I take my role-playing very seriously, and here we are. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if my voice is really any good for him, but whatever, I've, I've been getting a bit of praise from some of my fellow players, so that's what I'm sticking with. Uh, Lawrence, of course, has this whole aesthetic with the butler jacket and the sort of fancy man noble aesthetic, so I thought I would fully get the cosplay out and uh, do him proper justice. I didn't have a purple tie, unfortunately, which uh, kind of sucks. Lawrence's colors are kind of black and purple and silver, so there you go. Anyways, guys, I'm already rambling. Jesus Christ, let's get on topic. So, Lawrence and the Limelight, uh, I came up with that title a while ago. It's going to be sort of my character, Lawrence, putting another character in the Limelight. Ah, see what I did there? Very clever. So, it's going to be, yeah, like a D&D after show where we just get another character or one of my other players, or maybe even the DM, and we just talk about the previous episode, we talk a little bit more about our characters and that sort of thing. I think it's going to be a pretty cool idea. But in this episode, ladies and gentlemen, episode zero, we are going to be talking about my character, Lawrence, a few more crunchy things about his backstory and all that stuff. Uh, as I said before, I take my D&D role-playing very seriously, and I have gone absolutely ham with my character Lawrence. I have written out his entire life. His backstory is all on my D&D Beyond page. I will try and link it in the description down below if you would like to read the entire thing. But in any case, we're going to go through it all in this video, so stay tuned. Uh, yeah, guys, so I guess we'll start with how I came up with Lawrence and the whole concept of his character. So let's go from there. So then, folks, when it came to creating a character for this D&D podcast, I had a few ideas going through my head, but eventually I settled on the idea for Lawrence. Now, the idea for his character actually comes from two places. I have combined the two things to sort of create the character that is Lawrence Lulus von Einswald. First of all, we'll talk about his name. I wanted him to have just a really long and just ridiculously annoying and complicated, just like fancy nobleman name, so I came up with this whole thing. Uh, the Lulus in the middle was actually a random name generator for gods. Um, as I've said many, many times before, I take my D&D role-playing very seriously, I've come up with this whole crazy backstory, and uh, we'll get into it later in the video, but I don't really want to spoil it for my fellow players who are maybe watching this video, but um, I have taken it so seriously that the Lulus name, and the fact that I got it from a god random generator, 
during, I suppose, that, okay, well, whatever. Essentially, because it was a god name generator, the Lelous part I actually want to lead in to a secondary character. When Lawrence maybe has run his course, maybe if Lawrence actually dies in battle, I would like my secondary character to be a follow-on with that Lelous part. And that is all I'm going to say. It's just sort of a thing. I've talked about it with my DM and uh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll even really, like, I've just come up with this freaking, I've gone so deep into Lawrence's backstory, you don't understand. I've already started thinking about my second character and how I can link it to his backstory and all this backstory. <laughs> Big brain. And anyways, guys, the Von Einswald, I don't know really, I don't really know where the Von came from, just kind of like a German sort of thing, and then the Einswald just sounded like kind of a fancy kind of name. I was gonna go like Einstein or Eins, and then I was just like, yeah, Einswald, so, yeah. That's where his name comes from, thought it was pretty cool. Uh, anyways, getting on to the two core concepts about his character, the things that I combined to make him. So first of all, Lawrence is a... Okay, so the first idea for his character that I got was from this book series. Now, if you haven't heard of this book series, it is a... This is actually the second book, so whatever. But um, this is a very cool book series called The Great Coat Series by Sebastian de Castel. Uh, highly recommend. Great series. So the first concept for Lawrence's character comes from this book. The main character of this book is a guy called Falcio Valmond, and he is a great coat. So, this is a very quick sort of summation of this story. The Great Coats in these books are a group of legendary traveling magistrates. They go around the lands and they enforce laws and they follow the rules of their king. Uh, the Great Coats have had a very long hundred year history, but in Falcio's story, the Great Coats are a dying organization. He is one of the f last few Great Coats to exist in the world of Tristia, the continent. And uh, it's a very cool concept. I just love this idea of this ancient organization and it's like it's on the brink of destruction and there's like maybe a few left and it's just like they have to uphold the laws and their code and all this stuff and it's such a sick idea so anyways Falcio is this guy uh, the great coats are so named for their coats that they wear which are these big leather sort of coats it's very visual uh, they have these bone plates in the coats that protect them from damage and um, they have uh, dozens of different pockets and hidden little tools that they have and these coats are like the badge of their office it is said that if anyone is able to kill and steal a great coats coat then they sort of get the office as well but absolutely no one is able to beat a great coat so um in this whole series it's a very cool concept the great coats go around and uh, do all this thing but you know because they're uh, they are, as by the title, the Knight's Shadow, the Traitor's Blade, that sort of thing. The Greatcoats are traitors in this whole series because they failed their king. Their king has uh, fairly, well, not fairly recently, but their king was killed and blah, 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 blah. Fal it's up to Falcio to restore the Greatcoats' honor and all this stuff. It's very cool, very cool concept. So anyways, Falcio, of course, fights with dual rapiers. Uh, the Greatcoats are duelists, so they go around and enforce the king's laws, but when speaking and the negotiations fail, they fall upon their duelist abilities, as in they are very skilled at fighting on 1v1s. So whatever mayor or whatever lordling there is, they have a 1v1 with the champion, it's like 1v1 me bro, and they more often than not win because they are very skilled at dueling. So it's a very kind of cool thing. Falcio, of course, fights with dual rapiers, and he is all very skilled with the repost and the parry and all that. And then he, of course, has throwing knives. He has a little sort of van brace of throwing knives that he's able to chuck. So that's where the core sort of gameplay of uh, Lawrence's character comes from. I flavored the throwing knives a little bit more fun in Lawrence because he has this sort of little mechanism on his arm. Uh, Lauren backstory, I don't know, I suppose maybe Lawrence met this friend of his in his various travels and he was a contraptioneer and he made sort of a very basic device that is able to sort of uh, one of one of the things I like to do is Lawrence flicks his arm and a knife appears in his hand and then he throws it and it's all super sick so yeah just a very basic sort of device that has a knife that sort of just gravity feeds after he flicks his arm and then it falls down into his wrist and then he throws it so yeah that's kind of cool and uh, that's where the basic concept for Lawrence's character came from the dual rapiers the throwing knives so yes, Falcio Valmond and the books by Sebastian de Castel. I'm actually reading his second series, 
set in the same world, but it's a different character and it's a different sort of thing. It's all about mages and magic and stuff. Actually pretty sick. But uh, yes, highly recommend Mr. Sebastian. Thank you very much. And then leading on from the name Sebastian, that leads perfectly into the second part of Lawrence's character idea. Sebastian, if you're unfamiliar, is the name of a very popular anime butler. And no, I'm not talking about a black butler, I'm talking about Sebus from Overlord, who is a direct reference to Sebastian, but whatever. So the second part of Lawrence's character is that he is one hell of a butler. <laughs> References. So when I picture Lawrence, I picture Sebus from Overlord. I will have a picture of him here. So Sebus is a direct reference to Sebastian from Black Butler. Black Butler. If you're unfamiliar, Black Butler is a very cool anime that's about butlers and demons and all this stuff. And Sebastian is one hell of a butler. He goes around and protects his young lord and he's all very fancy and speaks like this and blah 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 blah. And I thought that concept was very cool. Uh, Sebus from Overlord is a direct reference to Black Butler, I'm fairly certain. Well, Sebus, Sebastian, it's pretty clever. So that's where the whole concept basically is. Sebastian, Lawrence, similar-ish sort of fancy names. And uh, yeah, so that's the second part of his character. He is one hell of a butler. Uh, he wears a... First of all, he wears, you know, the big sort of heavy black coat with various pockets, and uh, that's where the majority of his armor comes from, is this heavy leather coat with maybe like small metal plates or something. And then on the inside of his outfit, he has, you know, a fancy sort of butler wa waistcoat and a white shirt and that sort of thing. So yes, uh, I've, uh, my players, my fellow players have gone at lengths to make fun of me for the very long and long-winded descriptions of Lawrence's outfit, but that's a big part of his character so screw you shut up whatever so yeah that's about the that's the two main concepts of Lawrence's character uh freaking Sebastian from Overlord Sebus and Felcu Velmond so there you go that's where it all comes from Anyways, moving on from there, and that's the main concept of his character. Now, I'm not going to go into graphic detail about his backstory. If you would like to read the entire backstory that I wrote out, I don't know why. I was at work one day, and I was just like, ugh, so when Lawrence was 26, he left home, and then he became a soldier, and then he became a mercenary, and then he became a cook, and then he traveled the world, and then he did some more traveling, and then he killed a bunch of people, and I don't know, dude. I just came up with this entire thing. So Lawrence is a human male. He is 56 years old. He is sort of basically an old-ass man. And I've just wa I wanted him to have this concept of like you know he's see he's had a lot of life he's had a lot of journeys he's traveled the world he's been an adventurer and he's had a lot of different jobs he's been a soldier he's been a mercenary he's been a bartender he's been a farmer he's just done a lot of stuff with his life he's an old man and he's done a lot of things uh, I also wanted him to kind of be a jack of all trades being able to wield a lot of different weapons and being very proficient in combat so Lawrence is currently a level three fighter level one rogue uh, so the idea for I kind of regret multiclassing to be honest with you the level one rogue and being level two fighter means I didn't get my cool level three stuff until quite recently so yeah multiclassing maybe wasn't the best idea the rogue abilities have come in kind of come in handy but I don't really know but in any case uh, I wanted him to kind of be like this old jack of all trades like weapons guy but um, to be honest uh, just using my dual rapiers and with my extra finesse bonuses and stuff, that's probably the best way to do it, but whatever. So Lawrence's story, he grew up in a town called Mithrin, which was this small sort of, uh, well, not exactly small town. Um, this is yet to come up in the podcast, but the reason that Lawrence's family is so rich is because, wait for it, his family own a silver mine. <laughs> yeah, references, wigs of silver, YouTube, like and subscribe. <laughs> I'm gonna drop that on my fellow players at some point, but I suppose I've spoiled it now, but whatever. So yes, Lawrence grew up well to do. He's a noble, he comes from a wealthy family, and uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, one of the reasons he wanted to leave his home is because he saw one of his family members doing very something atrocious, something along the lines of beating up a peasant or something like that, and he he saw this and he didn't want to become the same kind of man. At the age of 26, Lawrence left his hometown and decided to travel the world. He sort of is rejected from his family for having left because, you know, now he doesn't have succession to his family's wealth. But, you know, he's still a respected son of the Lulus family and he holds himself high in high regard. I mean, 
Ironsword family, rather. Who loses his middle name, whatever. So, yes, Lawrence still has a decent relationship with his parents, but he doesn't really have a claim to sort of the Ironsword family riches because he left home. So that sort of thing. Uh, Lawrence proceeded to travel the world and see a lot of the world in the next five years or some shit. I can't remember the entire of the backstory that I wrote, but whatever. Uh, Lawrence eventually came to a town that he really liked. He stayed there for a while, he lived as a bartender, and he eventually found a girlfriend that he kind of enjoyed hanging out with. Uh, Lawrence got into many tavern brawls and beat up the ne'er-do-wells in the various taverns, but one day a group of bandits attacked the town, and one of them uh, was one of the bandits was uh, a customer that Lawrence actually beat up. This bandit wanted to get jealous revenge against Lawrence, they kidnapped his girlfriend, yada yada yada. Lawrence rushes through the town during the bandit raid to save his girlfriend. He eventually finds her and he was already too late. His girlfriend had been killed. In a fit of rage, Lawrence proceeds to murder those bandits who killed his girlfriend and those were the first few men that he ever killed. Uh, this starts Lawrence down a very dark path, he becomes sort of depressed and hates the world. Over the next five or six years, he travels as a soldier, uh, he is, um, um, you know, as a soldier, I, I wrote out this whole ridiculous thing, like, I don't know, he became too violent and too angry and he was discharged from the army because he was just too much of a wild card. And then from there he became a mercenary and he continued down this path of blood and violence for many years. But eventually he realized he wanted more from his life and he comes out of this world hatred sort of thing. He travels a bit more, blah 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 blah, and then eventually we come to the part of Lawrence's story where he becomes a butler. So this is a big part of Lawrence's character, there's this little boy that he meets called Peter. Now Peter is the sort of head or the young son of a wealthy family much like Lawrence once was, and Peter inspires Lawrence to believe in life again. He gives Lawrence a job as his butler, and over the next 10 years from his 40s to about his 50s, he serves as Peter's butler. Uh, you know, they have a nice little life together, but oh, tragedy, behold, behold the tragedy. Uh, Peter has a incurable disease, and over the 10 years, you know, Lawrence realizes that eventually young Peter is going to die. Uh, eventually, at the end of his terms of service, about 10 years he spends with Peter, he dies, and Lawrence promises to always remain his faithful butler. I will be your butler for eternity, my young lord. So that sort of thing. And that's where his whole butler aesthetic comes from, why he holds himself in such high regard, and why he's always trying to clean his suit. My other fellow players have always taken it upon themselves to be like, ha ha ha, funny meme, let's throw mud and shit at Lawrence. And he'll be like, oh no, I must stay clean. So that's kind of a funny little dynamic we have going in the podcast. But um, yes, that is the whole reason for his butler aesthetic. And uh, that is the main chunk of his backstory. So there you go, the whole butler aesthetic and that sort of thing. Now here we are, Lawrence is 56 years old. Uh, after his young Lord Peter died, uh, one of Peter's main sort of goals in life was to become an adventurer. So Lawrence has spent the fa past few years sort of learning to be more adventurous. And up until recently, he has been sort of traveling and trying to do more exciting things with his life. But now he has fallen back into to a mercenary job, and that is where we are now in the campaign. We are actually playing the Lost Minds of Philander campaign. F Fl Flanders? Philander? I still freaking can't say it, dude. But anyway, so at the start of the campaign, we are mercenaries, and we are escorting a caravan to a town called Philanderer, and that's where the story all begins. Encoding overloaded. What the fuck does that mean, OBS? Hmm. But anyways, so that's about the majority of Lawrence's backstory and how we started the campaign. So yeah, guys. Um, I think that'll about do it for everything I wanted to say in this video. I have just word vomited absolutely everything about Lawrence. So that is Lawrence's character in a nutshell. Everything about him you now know. There you go. And uh, yes, we have been continuing on with the podcast. It's been a lot of fun. And uh, I am excited to play more next week. Check us out on Wednesdays on the various Twitch channels. And uh, even check out the podcast. I will have a link to the Spotify down below. Uh, we can also find the Dungeons & Dingoes podcast on many other podcasting uh, websites. And uh, I will also have my DM's Twitter linked below. Because he posts various things about the podcast on Twitter as well. But uh, yes, Dungeons and Dragons has been quite a lot of fun, and I take it very seriously with all my character bullshit backstory stuff. I, I'm, I've been I've been really enjoying it. It's been quite a lot of fun. 
But anyways, guys, I think that's all about do it for this video. Thank you for watching this Dungeons & Dragons in the limelight with Lawrence, ep Lawrence episode 0. I have been just word vomiting and blathering on so much. Oh my god. Anyways, guys, that'll about do it for this video. Thank you for watching. And uh, I would very much appreciate my fellow players to join me maybe in episode one when we continue when we do. Uh, I'm not going to commit myself to like doing an episode every single week. We're just going to kind of do this casually, but whatever. We'll see how we go. In any case, guys, I've been blathering on too much. Thank you for watching this video, and I do hope you enjoy watching the podcast. And if you would like to check us out on Twitch, I will have that linked in the description down below as well. Okay then, everybody. We'll see you all in the next video, guys. Lawrence Luce von Einsworld, I bid you adieu. Farewell.